it looks like 2022 is gonna be the year that you're gonna need to upgrade your entire system if you wanna have the latest and greatest because it's not just the CPU and the RAM and the motherboard and the graphics cards that's gonna change. It also looks like power supplies are going to change and we have more indication of that coming out as the time is progressing and we're looking forward towards the RTX 40 series and the RX 7000 series and the more details that come out about it kind of indicate that your system sucks and whatever you've been holding on to since like 2012 to 2015 is not going to be good enough. So throw out your old computer, get ready for the new one, because in case you don't remember, the RTX 3090 Ti, which launched at the end of March, launched with a brand new power connector. Thankfully, they provided the cable adapters for it, but you can see it's a 16 pin power connector. This is not the same as what the other RTX 30 series cards had, which was a 12 pin power connector because this is actually a PCI Express 5.0 standard. And in case you want to see just how ridiculous this can get on current power supplies, there is an overclocker who took a picture of him running two RTX 3090 Ti Kingpins, which each have two of these 16 pin power connectors. And so those each had to go into three eight pin power connectors, which there was two of them on each. So you needed six cables plus two adapters for every card that you had. It's 18 cables. I think I did the math right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You need 16 cables just to run two graphics cards. Now, given the fact that this is a, an extreme overclocker and most people aren't gonna be tempted to run these massive cards in multiples and just only have one, this is not a realistic scenario, but it does present a current problem that's going on when it comes to power supplies that are currently out on the market. They are simply not ready for the upcoming generation of GPUs. And in fact, it's even worse than that because there was a new interview that came out between Intel and PC World indicating that there are power excursions that these GPUs are taking that your power supply might not be ready for. And only the new Intel ATX 3.0 PSUs will likely keep it from your system shutting down or burning up in a blaze of glory. According to Intel in the interview, they're saying that they euphemistically call them power excursions. You might recognize it by a less sugar-coated term, power spike and it essentially means that the GPU can exceed to maximum sustained power of the card by three times. That means a 600 watt card on a PCI Express 5.0 connector is allowed to spike to 1800 watts for 100 microseconds, which is absolutely crazy. And then continuing to say that to sm help smooth out those extremely short power excursions, a power supply has to be designed with enough extra capacitors to prevent the system from sagging power and possibly crashing a PC. By Intel's estimates, a 300 watt GPU, this is not the top of the line. The RTX 3090 Ti is currently 450 watts. We're expecting the RTX 4090 to be 600 watts. So this is not even the top of the line card on a properly designed ATX 3.0 could be supported with a 750 watt power supply with 300 watts for the CPU and another 150 watts for the rest of the hardware in the box. If you were to try and adapt this to an existing ATX 2.0 power supply, you would likely need a power supply at 1100 watts to support all of that because of these high power excursions. So it's very clear that in case you're planning on upgrading to the next generation of GPUs, it's already showing that Nvidia is going down this route for the 16 pin power connector. AMD is also likely to go down this route considering that they're gonna have the latest generation coming out sometime soon. You will either need a new power supply number one to provide significant enough power to these GPUs if you're gonna stay on ATX 2.0 or you're gonna need ATX 3.0 to have a native 16 pin power connector out of the box. But also in this interview, Intel kind of talked about the fact that these power connectors are slated to run from 150 watts all the way up to 600 watts on a GPU, which is not how it currently works. On a current graphics card, you either have a six pin or an eight pin, or you add them together to get to some power combination that the GPU is supposed to take. But since a low end power supply like 500 watts can't supply 450, 50 watts to the graphics card, there's gonna be some issue there with the fact that it all uses the same connector that can supposedly provide all of that power. Intel says that they're hoping in a mismatch system like this, your system would boot into the operating system, not crash because it's trying to consume all of that power on a 450 watt GPU, but then the GPU driver should let you know that it's running in power limiting mode and so that you actually can't run ahead with it.
with it. So it's very clear, no matter which route you're gonna be going, if you're gonna plan on upgrading to the next generation of GPUs, you're either gonna need tons of adapters with higher end power supplies, or you're gonna need a brand new power supply to run all of this. But despite the fact that PCI Express 5.0 power connectors are gonna be necessary for the next generation cards, turns out that Nvidia is not gonna be moving ahead with PCI Express 5.0 slots for their RTX 40 series cards because they're just saying that it's not needed and it's kind of too new of a technology. The RTX 4090 and below on the RTX 40 series is expected to be on PCI Express 4.0, so your current system likely is fine. And given the fact that it's currently only Intel's Alder Lake that supports PCI Express 5.0 and likely AMD is going to support it with their next generation, it's not surprising this has happened. The first PCI Express 4.0 GPUs we saw were AMD's RX 5000 series. Nvidia didn't pick it up until the RTX 30 series, not the RTX 20 series. Even though AMD's boards were out and supporting it that at that point, it was really kind of SSDs that picked up the new PCI Express standard first. But we're seeing with Intel adopting PCI Express 5.0 very early into the life cycle with Alder Lake it's not actually yielded any new SSDs. It kind of seems like they jumped the gun. They were trying to get ahead of AMD because they had PCI Express 4.0 first, and they were like, no, we're gonna have PCI Express 5.0 first. And then they did, but there's nothing to support it that you can get for regular mainstream consumer, and it probably won't actually be regular and mainstream until later this year when we have potentially PCI Express 5.0 GPUs from AMD, as well as PCI Express 5.0 SSDs that I'm expected to see coming down the pipeline. So it's a crazy mishmash of what's going on. Prepare yourself, my friends, for the next generation of stuff. AMD's Ryzen 7000 is looking to be like a large upgrade. Intel's Raptor Lake is also looking to be a large upgrade later on this year, as well as these GPUs sucking a ton of power, requiring new power supplies, and essentially making it so that you're gonna have to re-overhaul your entire system. You probably essentially can just hold on to your case. That's gonna be the only thing that's gonna continue on with you, but I wanna hear from you. Are you planning on upgrading to any of the new stuff that's coming out later this year where you're expecting major launches from Intel on the CPU side, AMD on the CPU and GPU side, and then Nvidia on the GPU side? I guess Intel's also releasing GPUs, but if that ever happens, we'll let you know here on Hot News. But let me know what you think of all this down below in the comments, and I'll see you tomorrow in the next episode of Hot News, my friends. Cheers.